Okay. I'm gonna draw on the dirt again. <laughs> take, take the dirt. Take the dirt. <laughs> Are you all familiar with what a tell is? When I say tell? Okay. So, so let me do a little drawing in the dirt, okay? This is, this is what you're looking at. So a long time ago, people started living in cities and they built a wall like that, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then they lived in here in the city on the other side of the wall. And there's a problem that developed around the time of Abraham where they made an invention called the battering ram. And they would come in and they would use the battering ram and they would bang down the wall and they'd go in and kill all the people. So um, no longer did the old style wall work anymore. So what they did is they put in on the other side of the cell, or, or the city, they put another wall like this. And the city used to be down here. They filled the whole thing in with dirt. Make sense? And then they built their city up here. Then you came in with your battering ram right here and you banged on the wall all day long, but the entire city was behind it. Make sense? That wall that you see right there is stone. Is this wall right here. That they, it's called a retaining wall, meaning it retained the dirt, the fill that they filled in on the inside of the city. Then on top of the retaining wall was another big wall. And it was a mud brick wall, okay, on both sides. So you had the retaining wall and then the mud brick wall on top of it. Of all the cities in the Middle East and in, in Israel, one city that was excavated had a collapsed wall. Now how do we know that it was a collapsed wall? This wall here, not this wall. This wall, the retaining wall, lasts and lasts and lasts. It's still standing today when you dig it out. It was the mud brick wall here that fell off to the outside of the city, off of the top of the retaining wall. The way that we know that is when this was excavated, you can see the last mud bricks, you know, the last level of mud bricks uh, uh, on the base of the wall, the mud brick wall up on top of this wall. And then when you excavate down, you find the, mud, the collapsed mud bricks down stacked up against the retaining, the stone retaining wall. This uh, more ancient building that you're looking at here gives you an idea of what these mud bricks look like. This actually has been excavated recently by an Italian team. And I was here just last year when they were excavating right there. And so I know exactly what it looks like, these collapsed mud bricks that they excavate out. Unfortunately, for us, archaeology is destructive. And so they remove all this stuff as they're going down. And I really wish that they would leave a section of it so you could see exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, after those Italians actually spend the bite as long because we, we see the wall is still standing. That's a section of yes, the road. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and and the, the Hebrew word means that the wall fell beneath itself. Well, how does the wall fall beneath itself? It's this upper mud brick wall that falls beneath this lower stone wall. And in fact, when you look at uh, Kenyon's plans, you see that it does form a, a pile of bricks that you would then climb up over the top of and then into the city. So what I want to do real fast, and I want us to kind of come tight together, because I want to do it quickly, is we're going to walk up there and you can still see, unless it washed away in the last rainstorm, you can still see part of the mud brick wall that was on top of this retaining wall. So let's just jump this. <laughs> don't, don't trip on this. Don't get close to the bolts. I lost the cameraman off the side of the bolt. That's still here. Can this keep recording? Okay. You see this discolored line right here? See this? Yes. Okay. What this is, is it's the base. You see a mud brick right here. Do you see that? That mud brick outline? What this is, is it's the last layer of mud bricks from the mud brick wall that stood it started right here is the edge and it went all the way over to the edge of the stone retaining wall you see that and it went up right here and this is the wall and there was another one another mud brick wall up the glass this is called the slope both of them collapsed went over the edge right here 
and, uh, and, and that's why we say that there's a collapsed wall around Jerus uh, Jericho. No scholar disputes that there's a collapsed wall around Jericho. That's completely agreed upon. So isn't that interesting that the number one thing in the Bible that Jericho is known for is its collapsed walls. The walls came tumbling down. And the number one thing that it's known for archaeologically that makes it unique from all the other tells in Jerusalem, in uh, Israel, is that there's a collapsed wall around it. So what we're supposed to do, logically, is look at the ancient text, look at what was found here, because the ancient text told us what we would find here before we dug. Then we dug, and that's what we found. So we're supposed to go, oh, look, we have an eyewitness account here. We have a reliable text. But what we do instead, because we're, uh, academia is run by the secular humanists, is they say, no, what happened is an earthquake hit 150 years before uh -huh. Joshua and the destruction later. Yeah. You drink yours? Yeah. I just crunched mine up and stuck in my pocket. Okay. Like I said, the switch from one wall to another took place because of the battering ram, right? So these buildings that you see on the outside of this retaining wall are older than the retaining wall. How do we know that? The low wall. Because look at the buildings. They got cut. The buildings got cut when the retaining wall went in. That makes the retaining wall later in time than the earlier buildings over here. So these buildings over here are the out, later. Outside, the yeah, city. they're they're like from the time of Abraham and before. And the retaining wall in the city within is from that time period onward. So this is the wall that Joshua and the Israelites were marching around. Okay. So what about well, the buildings in the way then? Well, uh, yeah, because these were the buildings when they had a wall that was around, but then they had to do this whole new system of filling in in between uh, the walls. So they made the, the, the city actually smaller. And you can see some burn in there. I'm sure you'll be learning about stratigraphy, but you can think of a tell like a layered cake. And every layer is a different occupation. And uh, they either deserted the city and it fell into ruins and then somebody came and built over those ruins or that was destroyed. And then you come over and uh, build over those ruins and that happened one time after no another down through thousands of years. This is, uh, this is a very important, this is the most important place in the Tell. Um, this uh, was dug in the 1907 to 1908 by a German team. That was the first time it was dug, and that's when they first exposed that outer retaining wall. Then it was dug in the 1930s by a guy named John Garstang. He dug this area out here, and these squares here are in from uh, the, the Italian group, but. You can't see much of his archaeology, if anything, that's left from that time. But what he found here was he found one room after another, and each room was full of these huge storage jars, like this big and about this high. And each storage jar was full of grain, and it was burned. Okay? And uh, he looked at the ancient text, 
the Bible, and the Bible said that the Israelites didn't plunder the city, and so he attributed it as evidence to uh, supporting the biblical text. Um, Kenyon wrote an article that said that Garsting was all wrong, and you know that the Bible was all wrong before she ever came to dig here. Layer that goes along, and as you go along, it, you'll see pieces of those storage jars. You'll see broken up pots. You see a rim right over here. You see uh, parts of the jars over here, and all that burn layer. Now that burn layer is thick. You're just looking at the bottom of it if you're looking at the thin line there. If you go up, you'll see more burn, and you'll see how high it goes. And that is the burn destruction that goes across this entire tell, and that is the destruction layer from the time of Joshua. It's, it's like you say, it's too bad, it can't see. You could have left at least the replica or something of it. Way at the bottom there, it looks like, is that a burn layer way down yes, at the very bottom? Um, I thought you were going for the ancient plastic bowl. <laughs> Come on. How can you tell that's particularly from Joshua's time? Well, first of all, it's it's uh, it's because of the shape of it, but um, it, it's falling out of that destruction layer as the rain comes down. So are you gonna keep it? I'm auctioning it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna keep it. Is is this is this also burned or what? No, that's part of a. Uh, oh, very nice. That's a chip. Yeah, what these are is they're uh, they're part of a grain for um, for uh, making flour out of grain, and they they were a disc, two discs that sat on top of each other with a handle on them and a hole in the middle. They poured the grain in there and then they rotated it like this. Oh, okay. Okay, with that handle, it might be easier to photograph on the ground there. <laughs> but there's the there's the Moabite Mountains, and uh, the tell that you guys are going to be digging is directly across from us right now. Um, Kind of a little hazy over there. But anyways, you can see where the land slopes down and then where it starts to slope up, right? So the Jordan River is coming down right here and into the sea of, uh, Dead Sea. There, we're even with the ground. So that's the bottom of the, that's as far back in occupation as you can possibly go in this tell. And that's the oldest fortification tower ever excavated, the oldest wall. And uh, their date that they gave it is 8,000 BC, but that could uh, vary, obviously. Also, you well, what part is 8,000? Just the tower and, and that everything tower right associated there? with the bottom of the tell. Yeah, you can see there's a hole in the top of the tower, and then down here there's a, there's an entrance to that staircase that comes up through the middle, so you could enter and get up onto that tower from inside the city. And um, skeleton, a body, on the staircase. This is the tower. And then also, have you heard of the plaster skulls that came from Jericho? The plaster skulls are really famous. What was it like to find the plaster skulls? He said, well, I was a bit put off. It was 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and I was ready for my cold beer. Then I had to stay and dig these skulls out. 